Hello everybody. Today we're gonna make an IMO collection box. This collection box is used in Korean natural farming to collect indigenous microorganisms, which you can then use to inoculate your garden. So let's get started. First, we're gonna talk about some of the tools you might need to make this box. I understand that everyone probably won't have access to the tools that I get to use today, but I will try to talk through a few other options for you and just remember that a pretty box doesn't matter to the microbes that we're trying to gather. This box is made out of a cedar picket, uh, what you would use on a fence from Home Depot. And I'll get into why we're using cedar a little bit later, but you can find a half inch by five and a half inch by six foot picket for $2.97 at Home Depot. You can go to any lumber yard and probably find cedar pickets, but I would caution, make sure you look for the untreated um, picket because you can find some that are treated with oil or some that are even stained. Uh, it's just best in this case to stick with the raw material. For me, I'm gonna need either a hammer or in my case, a brad nailer. One and a half inch galvanized nails, my drill with a quarter inch drill bit, chop saw or circular saw. Now remember, I have access to all these tools and it's a blessing for me to be able to have these tools so I can make this box. But again, I wanna stress that it doesn't need to be pretty, it doesn't need to be perfect. Whatever you have available to you is what will work. One of the heart threads of Korean natural farming specifically is that you use what you have available and don't worry about how pretty it looks. So now that we've covered a few things, let's go ahead and get started on building our box. I know you guys aren't a bunch of dummies, but the first things first is you always wanna have your safety gear. So today I'm just gonna have my glasses and hearing protection. I've got kids and you probably have kids or people that care about you, so protect yourself. Also, you might be thinking to yourself, Carter, you only have like one YouTube video and you have all these Ryobi tools. Are you sponsored by them? My answer would be no, I'm not. However, if they wanted to send me a check or some free tools, um, I would give them my address so they can do that. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to rip the side of my cedar picket so that way I can have a nice straight edge which actually this edge uh, here looks really nice so the only one I'm gonna rip is this side I'm gonna measure here uh, the distance between the opening at the front of my blade to um, my straight edge and then the back of the opening to my straight edge uh, something you don't want here is for this space to be wider than this space uh, because your board will end up squeezing and it'll push over into the blade and it's not a good deal. So I'm just double checking. So the reason we're using cedar, as my teacher Chris Trump explains, is it has a rot resistant and insect resistant uh, property to it. So using this box over and over and over again uh, won't won't affect us in any way. So now that I have all my straight edges, I'm gonna go ahead and measure five 10 inch cuts on this board. So I can have six 10 inch boards, which will make up my four sides of the box. And I need two extra boards for the bottom slats. Now I've got my chop saw here. I'm gonna go ahead and make one cut on the end of my board to make sure that it's nice and square here. I'm not trying to take off a bunch of material. I just wanna make it square. So now I'm gonna measure my 10 inches. Mark it. Use my straight edge. Now 
Now, I might have some tools like a straight edge and this chop saw that you don't have. If you don't have those things, you can use, you can use whatever you can find to make sure that you get a straight 90 cut or, um, I, I mean, if you wanted to, you could even cut this with a circular saw after you, after you make the line. What, what we're looking for here isn't perfection. What we're looking for is a box to collect fungi. So uh, don't get too wrapped up in making it perfect. So after I've measured once, I can make my cuts and then I'll be able to uh, just repeat the cut. So I wanted to turn this around so you guys could see it. So what I've done is I've made my first cut at 10 inches. And what I'm doing with this board is I'm lining it up, butting up these two ends just like this. And once these two ends are butted up, what I can do is set it on my saw and without pushing the trigger, lower my blade to just above the board. And now I can push this over until it hits the blade. And now it's touching the blade. I know that my cut is going to be just the same size as the first piece. So. And I'll just repeat that. And make sure to always use the first cut. Um, you can get off a little bit doing this method, but if you always used your first board that you cut, then you'll be, you'll be fine. All right, so now you see I've got my six boards and two of these are gonna be set aside for the bottom part of my box and these four are gonna be the sides. So let's go ahead and put those together to see what they look like. So I would suggest getting galvanized nails but all I could find were these regular indoor nails. I think they'll do fine. I would say if you could get galvanized that will be better, it will resist being outside in the weather a little bit better but these will do just fine and these are brad nails i happen to have i happen to have this rayobi brad nailer um, that's really perfect for this perfect for this application um, so this is what i'm going to be using today if you don't have these tools you can of course use a, a regular hammer and then it will work just fine. So the way we're gonna be joining these two boards is with a, a regular butt joint. And this butt joint is uh, nothing special, but the reason it's important right now is because for this one board, this 10 inch board, we're gonna add a half inch board on this side, and we're gonna add a half inch of board on this side. So then what we end up with is a total of 11 inches across the board, if that makes sense. So now we have um, 11 inches in width, and because these boards are only 10 inches, we're gonna have a, a 10 inch length on that side. When you're assembling yours, if you have a brad nailer like I do, please don't hold it right here and then shoot your nails. Your nails are, these brad nails are not very sturdy and sometimes they'll hit a grain and shoot out like that and more times than not, you'll get a nail in the finger. So just be aware of that. So the important thing to note here now that I've got it tacked together is that the half inch of board here plus this 10 inch board plus the extra half inch at the bottom creates 11 inches total. So this 11 inches here 
and this 10 inches here is perfect for a paper towel. So a full paper towel sheet will fit right over this and that's the only reason that we chose this measurement. Um, you can do whatever measurement you would like, but this measurement specifically, that's why we chose it. Uh, my teacher, Chris Trump, said that he uses this exact collection box for his 750 acre macadamia nut farm. So if you think that you need something bigger, go for it, but I would venture to say that you probably don't. So I've just tacked it together lightly right now um, at my joints. Uh, what I'm gonna do is add another brad nail to each um, board because these butt joints aren't super strong in general, but it's gonna get a lot more sturdy whenever we add our slats to the bottom. Okay, so now that we have our basic box built, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our other two boards here and we're gonna make sure that they fit. So remember these are 10 inches long and they should fit right in here. Great, okay, so we know this one fits. And this one is a little tight. That one's a little tight and won't quite fit. Um, so I might shave off just a little bit with my saw. Okay, so now that I have these two boards trimmed up so they fit inside of my box well, remember again, these are about 10 inches long right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip these boards to two inches. Um, there, this is a little over five inches right now, so I can get two two-inch pieces out of it. And those are gonna be the slats for the bottom of our box. So I'm just gonna measure this again, make sure I'm at two inches. Go ahead and raise my blade up this time. Measure to the actual blade, because I want these to be two inches. Perfect. So now look what I have. I have my four slats for the bottom of my board. So the way that I found that to assemble this easiest is to line these four up um, and then slide your box over the top of it. So now they're all in there. The way I want to attach these slats to the bottom of the box is with a slight space in between. And the reason that there's a slight space in between each slat is uh, twofold, actually. One thing, we're creating an air gap, so that way there is airflow. And the second thing is, we want to allow the microbes to come up through the bottom of the box and start eating on our rice. We can talk more about how to do IMO1 in a different video. But for now, we just want to make sure that we have uh, the correct tools to be able to collect what we're looking for. Now that those have one nail in them, I'm going to go ahead and set them in place by putting a second nail. So as you can see, my boards are now spaced somewhat evenly inside my box. I'm going to go ahead and nail down the other side. All right, there we go. We have our box all tacked together. Here's what the bottom looks like. You can see that there's space between all these slats. And the reason for that is, again, we want the microbes to be able to pass through. We want them to be able to jump up into the bottom of our box and then start eating on the rice that we put inside of here. So the final step after we have our box all put together is we're going to add a few holes on each side to add a little bit more airflow. And then we're finished. So I'm using a quarter inch drill bit. Um, at this point, 
there is no rhyme or reason to where you put the holes. Um, when you are collecting IMO, you're gonna be filling this box about two thirds full. So maybe to about here with rice. And if you can think, there's gonna be sufficient air space above your rice to create airflow. And then we have these slats in the bottom for airflow. So if this much is gonna be filled with rice, I would think somewhere in this middle section is where I need air. So again, there's no rhyme or reason to this, but just so you guys know and can uh, recreate this for yourself, the way that I do it is about one inch or two inches up from the bottom. I drill my first hole right in the middle of the box. Now once I have my first hole, I split the difference between this hole and the next side and drill another one. And I do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, this does not have to be perfect. So, as you can see, now I have four spaces between my holes, one, two, three, four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go a little bit above those holes and drill a hole in each space. So, now you can see what I have is sufficient airflow on this side of my box. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for each side, and then I'm going to be finished. And there you have it. You're finished. IMO1 collection box. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you want one of these boxes, I've been debating whether or not to just make a bunch and then I could send them out to folks. Um, I don't know. I, I enjoy this kind of thing. It's pretty fun. So if you want one, maybe send me a message or a comment on this video and then we can work that out together. Um, if you need any additional resources or have any questions, please comment. And I really uh, would like to help you guys out. So um, again, I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, KNF Journey. I'm just walking this journey out just like you guys are. Thanks for joining me on my KNF journey. I'll talk to you soon.